Hi there, and welcome to another one of my video Bible lessons. Uh, this topic is healing, and it's an important topic, especially in the world right now, and I'm going to be doing more than one lesson, so it'll be a series. I'm also going to be doing what, some about prayer. So I'll get started, and I hope you guys enjoy these. So one, one word from God can change your life. If you have a passion to see people healed, that comes from God. God put that on the inside of you. Healing is a part of salvation. Healing is part of what Jesus came for. Jesus never taught healing. And I find that interesting. He taught the kingdom. And in preaching the kingdom, people got healed. But I can't find a place where he sat down and taught this is how you get healed. Healing was simply a symptom of the kingdom preaching. People got healed when they heard Jesus preach about the kingdom. We teach a lot about healing now because we've been taught against it for so many years. Hundreds of years the church was against healing and put it off into God's sovereign will if he feels like it. And, and that's done tremendous damage to the body of Christ. Our first scripture today comes from us, uh, Luke 4, 18 and 19. That's Luke 4, 18 and 19. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, and, so, and set a liberty to those who are oppressed, to proclaim the, uh, the acceptable year of the Lord. So Jesus takes a, a quote from Isaiah saying, This is the acceptable year of the Lord, to heal the brokenhearted, to set the captives free. And everyone that came to him got healed. So this also includes physical healing because it's a message of salvation. There's two main words of salvation in the Greek, sozo and soteria. And both of them include physical healing. So when Jesus comes to preach the kingdom, the kingdom is going to include everything the man needs in spirit, soul, and body. Our next scripture comes to us from Luke 9, verse 11. That's Luke 9, verse 11. But when the multitude knew it, they followed him and received him and spoke to them. He, uh, he received them and spoke to them. <coughs> about the kingdom of God and heal those who needed healing. So healing follows the kingdom message. Everywhere Jesus went, when he's preaching about the kingdom, people would come to him and be healed. I find many times when people would come to be prayed for, they come to talk and be prayed for. They come to tell the prayer ministers everything that's wrong with them and every drug that they're taking. They come to talk. And I don't see that in scriptures, and I would suggest stop doing that. Don't come to talk. Come to listen. It doesn't matter what your list of stuff is. If you would come to hear and be healed, that would be the key. He went preaching the kingdom, and people would be healed by listening to the message of the kingdom. Healing should follow the gospel just as much as salvation. Salvation is for the whole man, spirit, soul, and body. So it's not any harder for the body to get healed than it is for your spirit to be recreated. It shouldn't be any harder. It should be the package that we enjoy through salvation. Our next scriptures are in Acts chapter 8, 5 to 7, and then I'm going to read verse 12. So first 5 to 7, and then verse 12. Then when Philip went down to the city of Samaria, he preached Christ to them. And the multitudes, with one accord, heeded the spoken, heeded things spoken by Christ, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits, crying with a loud voice, came out of many who were possessed, and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed. 
Now verse 12. When they believed as he preached the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus, both men and women were baptized. So Philip, as someone we can relate to, he was a common uh, person. He waited on tables. Philip was a guy like us, and he went out to preach the kingdom, and people were getting healed. And it should be no different for us today. This shouldn't be complicated, but we make it complicated. Healing should not be any more complicated or difficult than simply just getting saved. It's the same redemption that took place on the cross. The message is for spirit's own body, not just for spirit. Our next scripture comes to us from 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 20. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. So uh, this means the kingdom is not in the word of man, but it's in the power of God. When we preach this gospel, the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Everything you need has been provided for through the power of the gospel. The kingdom doesn't consist of the word of man. It consists of the word of God. Uh, John 6.63. John 6.63. It is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak are spirit and they are life. So when we preach the word, we should expect to see the physical being transformed and being healed. The kingdom message is a healing message. If you need healing, it doesn't necessarily need to be a healing message. It needs to be the gospel. And when it's the gospel... It's going to carry its symptoms. And one of the symptoms is healing. God's will is health and healing. Much of the conflict in church today in terms of the healing message is that many people aren't convinced that it's God's will. So when they approach the subject of healing, they approach it from a position of, it may not be God's will to heal me. Or, this sickness may be God put God, maybe it's God's will for, for my life to teach me something. We aren't double-minded or, 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 or doubting. We, when we talk about salvation from sin, you believe with your heart and confess with your mouth, you shall be saved. What about healing? Something that's different. No, it's not different. Because if you believe with your heart and confess with your mouth, you shall be saved. That word saved means healed. But if there's conflict in your heart and you're double-minded about this, then we're setting your, yourselves up for failure. With Paul's thorn in the flesh, Paul wasn't sick. He was a messenger from Satan sent to buffet him. And then he talks about all, the, all this buffeting he went through. And everything that, that he lists in 2 Corinthians, sickness isn't listed. We keep looking for theological reasons of why we are sick rather than standing on the word of God and understanding the covenant that, that we have and the power of the blood and the power of his name. God has provided healing for our bodies. You need to get a revelation of God's will for your life. Who came up with the idea of the abundant life? God did. Who came up with the exceedingly more abundantly than we can ever ask for. God did. All of his promises are yes and amen. Faith is born when God's will is known in your heart. See, a lot of people can understand it in their mind, but they don't know it in their heart. You've got to know God's will in your heart. God wants you well. God wants you whole. And God wants you free. Sickness is not part of God's creation.
Our next scripture comes to us from Genesis chapter 1, verse 31. That's Genesis chapter 1, verse 31. And then God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. So the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So there was no death, therefore there was no sickness in creation. It was, it was never part of God's plan. Our next scripture comes to us from Acts 10, verse 38. That's Acts 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit, and with the power who went about doing good, and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with them. So this verse shows healing is good. These people were oppressed by the devil, not oppressed by God. Where the presence of God is, healing will take place because that's his nature. The only thing that stops that stops our that stops it is our own unbelief. So if God lives in you, the healer lives inside of you. Our next scripture is Revelations 22, verse 2. In the middle of its uh, streets, on either side of the river, was the tree of life, which bore twelve fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of its tree were the healing for the nations. <clears throat> so the, the word in this verse for healing is where, where we get therapy from, which means medical service, curing, or healing. God is still interested in your healing and those that have need of healing. We need to get a mindset that understands that sickness is not of God. John 6.38. Let's see, did I do that one? John 6.38. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. So Jesus is a rep re representation of God. He is fully committed to his Father's will. Therefore, every healing that took place and healed all who came, every one of those is a revelation of God's will. Everyone that came to him got healed. And there was never a case where Jesus said no. Someone... Some of, uh, some, of, uh, some, of the, some of you need to get a different image of God on the inside of you. God isn't beating you down with sickness to make something out of you. No. Now, yes, sickness might awaken your need for God, but that doesn't mean God is using it. You're using it. Everything that God is going to do for you and for your healing, he's already finished. It's not about trying to convince God to heal you. It's about you getting into a place of learning how to receive what we've got and how to receive from him. I will be touching more about that in future lessons through prayer and more healing. Mark 1, verse, tw uh, let's see here, 39 to 41. And he was preaching in the synagogues throughout all Galilee, casting out demons. Now a leper came to him, imploring, kneeling down, and saying to him, If you're willing, make me clean. And then Jesus, moved with compassion, stretched out his hand and touched him, and said, I am willing, be cleansed. So this, this is the time when someone asking, this is the only time when someone is asking if it's his will. Whatever is good enough for this leper is good enough for you. He is willing that he is willing that he is healed. He became sickness and a curse for us on the cross. And many times people say, I'm waiting for my healing to be manifest. 
what you're really saying is I'm waiting for my body to tell me to be that I'm healed. And that's the problem. Don't wait for your body. Stand on the word. Tell your body what's going on. You don't let your body tell you what's going on. Your feelings will submit to what you believe. Mark 5.22. That's Mark 5.22. And behold, one of the rulers of the synagogue, King Jairus, Jairus by name, and when he saw him, he fell at his feet. And he begged him earnestly, saying, My little daughter lies at the point of death. Come, lay near her. Lay your hands on her, and she may be healed, that she may live. So Jairus is setting the, the criteria for his healing. He has a point of faith. So we'll jump down to 20, 27 and 28 of the same chapter. When she heard about Jesus, she came be behind him in the crowd and touched him, touched his garment. For she said, If only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made healed. And immediately the fountain of blood was dried up, and she felt her body that she was healed of the infection. She set the criteria for her healing. Jesus is always yes and amen. Jesus will meet you at the point of your faith. One of the greatest hindrances that we have in the body of Christ is that we know too much. We think that our knowledge is faith. Because I understand healing and because I need healing, therefore that equals faith. Knowledge plus need does not equal faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Negative people can choke the word of God and can choke the environment of your faith. So that is my lesson. Hope you guys uh, really enjoyed it and continue to share my, my lessons. Um, I will be posting more. And like I said, I'm doing some about prayer as well. Because um, these are important topics right now. So I will be doing those. I will also be doing more of the Gospel of uh, John as well. Um, so you, you can look forward to those. So that is all for today. And so... Um, I am working on my one on prayer right now. It's a really good one. And I hope you guys will tune in to, to watch it. So God bless.